Hello everyone, welcome to Axtronautics for Exploit. In this video, I will be going over the Kaman line, Chervon Kaman, Federation Aeronautic International, FA High, Kaman line altitude and edge of space. From the perspective of Earth, space is where the atmosphere becomes thin, even to the point of non-existence. The atmosphere is a collection of progressively thinning layers of gases, rather than a well-defined entity. The argument about where the atmosphere ends and space begins predates the launch of the first artificial satellite, referred to as Sputnik 1, on October 4, 1957. This marked the beginning of the space age. Although there is no definite boundary where space starts, the most widely accepted boundary is called Kerman Line, which is often reversed to as the edge of space. The line is usually said to be at 100 km altitude. Kerman Line is the hypothetical line that delineates the Earth's atmosphere from outer space. On Kerman Line, Earth's atmosphere stops and outer space begins. Altitude above which aerodynamic lift could no longer keep an aircraft aloft is the Cayman Line. Anything past the Cayman Line is not subject to control by countries like their airspace. Commonly used by space treaties, aerospace engineers and scientists for legal and regulatory measures is the Cayman Line. It is not a natural boundary but a convention used by scientists and diplomats. Sir von Kerman was a mathematician, aerospace engineer, and physicist whose interests were majorly in the fields of aeronautics and astronautics. He is regarded as the outstanding aerodynamic theoretician of the 28th century. He suggested the creation of Kerman line for the clear cut separation of the fields of aeronautics and astronautics and he was responsible for many key advances in aerodynamics, notably on supersonic and hypersonic airflow characterization. This picture shows Ted von Kerman. Federation Aeronautic International is an international standard setting and record keeping body for aeronautics and astronautics. Aeronautics is the science which involves the study, design and manufacturing of air flight machines and the techniques of operating aircraft and rockets within the atmosphere. While astronautics, which is sometimes referred to as cosmonautics, is the theory and practice of travel beyond Earth's atmosphere into outer space. It was one of its main applications as space flight and space science as a field of study. These pictures show Space Shuttle Atlantis on the Shuttle Carrier Aircraft and International Space Station. Kerman Line Altitude FA High defines the Kerman Line as the altitude of 100 kilometers, that is 62 miles, above Earth's mean sea level. It is also defined as a boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and the outer space. Not all countries and organizations are in unanimous agreement on the location of the Cayman Line. Some countries consider the distance to be 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and other countries consider the distance to be 80 kilometers. This picture shows Earth from International Space Station. Earth's atmosphere does not end abruptly at 62 miles above the sea level. It becomes progressively thinner as altitude increases. There is still a layer of hair surrounding Earth. This hair is the Earth's atmosphere. Hair is the mixture of gases surrounding Earth. Most of the gas is nitrogen 78% or oxygen 21%. The harder 1% is a mixture of argon, which is 0.9%, carbon dioxide is 0.03%, and trace amounts of neon, helium, methane, water vapor, 
krypton, hydrogen, and xenon. Depending on one's location and time of the year, the hair may also contain pollen. Hair is not evenly distributed throughout the atmosphere. If one travels up from our surface, there will be less and less hair the higher one goes. Gravity pulls the hair molecules down towards Earth, meaning that the thickest air is right above our surface. As one moves upward, altitude increases, and the hair becomes increasingly thinner. There are fewer hair molecules at high elevations, including oxygen molecules. This makes it harder to breathe at high altitudes. Our atmosphere is separated into distinct layers. Sometimes the temperature increases as one moves upward, and sometimes it decreases. Every time the temperature change reverses direction, it marks the boundary between separate atmospheric layers. The troposphere. The first layer, the troposphere, starts at ground level and extends up to about 10 kilometers, approximately 6 miles or 33,000 feet. When moving upward through the troposphere, the temperature steadily decreases. And this is why high points like mountain tops have snow on them. The troposphere contains almost all of the water vapor in our atmosphere. And this implies that clouds and water exist only in the troposphere. At the top of the troposphere, we reach a section called the tropopause, which is the boundary between the troposphere and the next layer. In the tropopause, the temperature finally stops decreasing at around minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, that is minus 15 degrees Celsius, and remains fairly steady before beginning to increase as we enter the next layer, which is the stratosphere. The stratosphere begins where the troposphere ends and extends to about 50 kilometers, that is 31 miles above Earth. Moving up through the stratosphere, the temperature now increases instead of decreases. It doesn't get very hot though, and the temperature stops increasing right before we get above the freezing point of 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Although too high for most commercial airplanes, large jets may fly in the stratosphere to avoid the weather systems found in the troposphere. The third layer is the mesosphere. The mesosphere exists from about 50 kilometers to about 85 kilometers above half. Moving upward through the mesosphere, the temperature once again decreases. Most meteors that would otherwise eat at are instead vaporized in the mesosphere. Some bits of meteor remain in this layer, which causes this layer to have a slightly higher concentration of metals. At the top of the mesosphere, we have the mesos mesopause before entering the fourth layer of our atmosphere, which is the thermosphere. The thermosphere extends from about 90 kilometers to between 500 and 1000 kilometers above Earth. Other space officially begins in this layer at an altitude of 100 kilometers or 62 miles. It will only take about an hour of driving at highway speed in order to reach this point on our journey. The atmosphere is very hot during the day but cold at night. The air density is so low that most of the atmosphere is technically considered part of space. When the sun is very active, the atmosphere puffs off to absorb more X-ray and ultraviolet radiation. Due to the extreme temperatures, it will be very difficult to allow humans to spend time in the thermosphere. However, this is where most satellites orbit Earth. The satellites are used for a variety of purposes, such as for sending global positioning data, radio and TV signals, and weather measurements back to the Earth's surface. 
the thermosphere is almost home to the aurora as northern and southern lights these lights are produced when charged particles from space collide with molecules and atoms this sends the particles in the higher energy state and then that extra energy is emitted as light that we see the last layer is the exosphere the exosphere is the final atmospheric layer here the air is so thin that it is nearly identical to the conditions in outer space the bottom of the exosphere on top of the thermosphere is called the thermopause or exobase and is found at a, at roughly 1000 kilometers above the planet earth Thermal line is within the Earth's atmosphere with major layers the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. It lies between the mesosphere and the thermosphere. This picture shows Earth's atmosphere. Considering the thermosphere and exosphere as part of the atmosphere and not of space, the boundary to space has to be extended. To at least about 10,000 kilometers, that is 6,200 miles above sea level. The Kerman line is situated above the Omopause, and above this point, the atmospheric gases are not well missed. These pictures show layers of Earth's atmosphere. Calculation of Kerman line The Kerman line is determined by calculating at what elevation. The Earth's atmosphere becomes too weak to support flight. Had the Kerman line, the atmosphere is too thin to support flight, and the plane must go fast in order to stay aloft. This picture shows Earth's atmosphere. The Kerman line is determined by calculating at what elevation the Earth's atmosphere becomes too weak to support flight. And at the Kerman line, the atmosphere is too thin to support flight. This picture shows the black blackish area of space. Edge of space. Edge of space refers to a region below the conventional 100 kilometers boundary to space. It often includes substantially lower regions as well. Edge of space varies considerably depending on how the various layers that make up the space around the Earth are defined and also whether these layers are considered part of the actual atmosphere. This picture shows line between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Certain balloon or airplane flights might be described as reaching the edge of space. Reaching the edge of space merely refers to going higher than average aeronautical vehicles commonly would. This picture shows edge of space. For more information, contact Astronautics for Exploit. Thank you.